This is one of my favorite species. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to our guest speaker today, Berlina. Berlina, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm really excited to talk about horseshoe crabs today. Um, so I, I guess I'll just roll straight into my sure. presentation. Yeah, sounds All great. All right, uh, let me just share my PowerPoint. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Berlin Akers and I work as a research associate at FWRI um, and I'm so happy to celebrate Marine Quest 2020 with you all. Today I'd like to talk to you about some of the oldest and coolest animals on our Florida shores, the horseshoe crab. Uh, so horseshoe crabs have been around for a very, very, very long time, longer than dinosaurs, longer than the trees have been around. Um, they have been around for so long and I've seen so many changes over time. Today, I'll tell you all about horseshoe crabs so the next time you see one on the beach, you can tell your parents all about these living fossils. So first off, what exactly are horseshoe crabs? Well, they are shield or helmet shaped creatures with many legs and a body that is split into three sections. The prosoma, so that's the front part. The epithosoma, which is the middle section, and then the telson or their tail. On the underside of the horseshoe crab, they have five pairs of legs. Um, they have a mouth, an operculum, and then they have these sets of ancient book gills. Um, and one of the more interesting things, funny things, I guess, about horseshoe crabs is they are not actually crabs or crustaceans at all. Horseshoe crabs are distantly related to crabs, millipedes, um, beetles, and spiders. They're all in the same phylum, arthropoda. Um, arthropods have an exoskeleton, segmented bodies, and paired appendages, um, and so they have some similarities to crabs and insects, um, but they split apart from the crabs and insects pretty quickly, um, and they're in the subphylum Shella uh, serrata, I always say that wrong, um, where that also includes uh, spiders, ticks, and scorpions. So horseshoe crabs are more closely related to spiders and scorpions than they really are to crabs. Um, and then they break out into the order Ziphosurida. Um, and this is um, the last time you actually have horseshoe crabs lumped in with other horseshoe crabs, believe it or not. So there are four species of horseshoe crab in the world and our Atlantic horseshoe crab or American horseshoe crab um, is, is very distantly related to the other three species that are all found in Asia. Um, our American horseshoe crab is in the family Limulidae. Um, it's the only living species in this family. They're in the genus, genus Limulus, and they're the species Polyphemus. So just by looking at a crab's taxonomy, we can learn a lot about them and get a feel for just how ancient they are. Um, horseshoe crabs are more closely related to other horseshoe crabs. <laughs> like the horseshoe crab found here in Florida is more closely related to a species of horseshoe crab, Limulus darwini, that went extinct 150 million years ago. So they have been around and have not really changed at all uh, for well over 150 million years. Uh, and because they've been around for so long, we like to call them living fossils. Uh, so how about that strange name? Limulus polyphemus. I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but I'd first like to explain the concept of scientific names. So an animal's genus and species are what makes its scientific name. A scientific name is the official term for an animal. So generally scientific names are composed of Latin languages, which Latin is a language that is no longer spoken. Um, and this is helpful because it doesn't matter what language you speak person personally, the scientific name will always be the same. For example, if two scientists were discussing horseshoe crabs and one spoke Spanish, they may refer to a horseshoe crab in their native tongue as cangrejo uh, de jarada. Uh, and then an American researcher or uh, a British researcher would still refer to it as a horseshoe crab um, in English. But if they were talking about Limulus polyphemus, well, both scientists would immediately be on the exact same page because no matter what country you live in, a horseshoe crab is also always called Limulus polyphemus. Um, so how about that bizarre name, Limulus polyphemus? Well, Limulus means a little askew or odd in Latin, which is a reasonable thing to call these strange creatures. Polyphemus is a little less obvious. 
Um, and this one may tie you into your future coursework in high school. Uh, if you read a book in, called The Odyssey when you go to high school, you'll learn about this uh, explorer uh, Odysseus who takes 20 years to return home from war and goes on all sorts of adventures along the way. While making his way home, he encounters an island with a cyclops on it. And uh, can you guess the name of the cyclops? It's Polyphemus. So now you can see horseshoe crab, or the scientists who named horseshoe crabs saw that big, bright, circular looking eye on the front of its shell and thought, Cyclops. Okay, Polyphemus. And so that's where the horseshoe crab gets its scientific name, Limulus Polyphemus. But this is another funny thing about the horseshoe crab. When you learn just how many eyes a horseshoe crab has, Polyphemus is not really all that thing. Yes, horseshoe crabs do have an eye in the very center of their shell right here, but they also have eyes next to that eye. And they have a pair of eye on the side of their he head too, these compound eyes, and eyes right next to those eyes. They also have eyes underneath their shell, and they have eyes along their telson. So horseshoe crabs have a total of 10 eyes, to be precise. Um, so Polyphemus is a little reductive when it comes to describing a horseshoe crab at the end of the day. Um, so with all these eyes, what can horseshoe crabs see? Horseshoe crabs have all these eyes, um, but the most sensitive eye on the horseshoe crab is that side eye, those compound eyes on the sides of their shell. These eyes are like those of flies and dragonflies. They have little lenses on them called omatodia, like pixels on your phone and com or computer screen. And each one of these little amatidia collect information separately and the horseshoe crab puts them all together into one big complete image. Horseshoe crabs have about a thousand amatidia, so they can see roughly a little better than your average ant. Uh, so not amazing vision, but considering their vision hasn't changed for 200 million years, it's still pretty good for an animal, especially in, in, in animals so ancient. So how about how they eat? This one's pretty fun. Uh, here's a quick clip of a horseshoe crab eating a little bit of shrimp I stuck in his, uh, in his mouth. So as you can see here, horseshoe crabs actually have what look like sort of teeth in the center of their mouth. These are called the nathobases. And so when they crawl, they're actually chewing at the same time and the food enters into their stomach, which is in the center of their, um, their prosoma. So horseshoe crabs have a mouth in the center of their legs and they chew when they walk. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so horseshoe crabs also have five pairs of legs, which is useful when you're chewing and walking at the same time. Here's a short clip of a little guy crawling around on, on the floor in the tide flats. So you can see that they move pretty quickly in the water. Uh, and he's, he's a very young crab, so he's tiny. Um, and then here's just one more because I just love watching them move. This is uh, another example of a horseshoe crab moving this one time on land. Um, here's a clip of him trying to make a break for it uh, while we were getting him measured and tagged for the research we're doing currently. So yeah, he, he didn't want to be there. <laughs> he was tagged and released happily not too long after I took this video. Now we know how they move, we know how they eat, but uh, what do they eat and what eats them? So horseshoe crabs are like little undersea vacuums. They eat small clams and worms and anything they find on the ocean floor as they scurry along. They can easily throw their prey directly into their mouths as they go. No need to slow down because their legs do all their chewing for them. Not a lot of animals eat horseshoe crabs as adults. So when a horseshoe crab reaches adulthood, occasionally it will eaten, get eaten by maybe a shark, a loggerhead turtle, an alligator, or a large striped bass but not a lot of animals eat them once they reach maturity. Now their eggs get eaten fairly often by shorebirds. They're actually incredibly important food source to shorebirds. Um, so when you're at the beach and you see birds poking their beaks into the surf, they may actually be looking for horseshoe crab nests to munch on. 
So horseshoe crabs are an important part of the, um, the ocean ecosystem. Uh, so you may be wondering why so few predators? Well, just take a look at this horseshoe crab shape. Look at their body. Their shell is like a shield and their tail is like a sword. It's not exactly an appetizing snack. The body shape has kept them from being, from being prey for hundreds of millions of years. I can't imagine and ever, ever thinking an animal that looks like that would be appetizing or worth uh, the mouth irritation trying to swallow something like that. And that's why so few animals and usually only animals with very large or very tough jaws like alligators or loggerhead sea turtles really ever bother to try to make a meal out of a horseshoe crab. But that tail, um, their tail shape is not for slicing or stabbing or really anything uh, meant to be aggressive or and in defense really. Um, it's not got any poison. There's no way for a horseshoe crab to poison you or sting you. They're harmless beyond the fact that they're just very pokey animals, which is just their form of defense. So their tail they actually use to flip themselves upright if they roll over when they come onto shore to spawn. Sometimes their tails are broken and they simply can't flip themselves over. When this happens, you should flip them. Go ahead and grab their prosoma, so the front part of their shell, and gently flip them over in the direction of the water and they will be very grateful. Usually their tail will actually allow them to flip themselves but sometimes by their position, they just can't do it. Now, one thing to note is never ever pick a horseshoe crab up by its tail or its telson. The tail is connected to its opithosoma, that center part of its body, by many muscles and tendons. So if you lift it by its tail, those muscles could get damaged or snap. If that happens, the horseshoe crab may not be able to use its tail anymore. And if it were to get stranded on the beach again, it would not be able to save itself and may die if nobody's there to help flip it. So please do flip them. You are probably saving their lives and it does make a very big and helpful difference to the horseshoe crab population. Uh, just be sure to flip them by lifting up their prosoma, so that front part of their shell and not their tail. One more fun fact about horseshoe crabs today. Um, the other thing to keep an eye out for if you're at the beach is, well, you may come across a horseshoe crab shell. And this may be, be because the crab has died. They do, everything does. Um, but it could also just be a molt. So horseshoe crabs grow by breaking out of their old shell so they can expand out into a newer one that was hiding inside of them. They do this 16 to 17 times in their life before they reach adulthood, at which point they don't molt ever again. So that means they leave behind 16 to 17 molts that can easily be mistaken for a dead crab. To check if the shell you find is a horseshoe crab molt or a dead horseshoe crab, feel the front lip of its shell. So the front prosoma lip, that front section there. If it splits open, then you know you are holding a horseshoe crab molt and the horseshoe crab is probably happily scurrying around the ocean floor a little larger than it was before. Um, so that's not a dead crab. Um, if it doesn't split, then it may be a dead crab and it could have died because it, it got sick. It could have died because it reached old age. You never really know um, without a lot more investigation. So keep your eyes out. You may see a lot of molts all at once, too. We tend to see a lot of them in Florida around July um, and June because that is roughly about a month after horseshoe crabs have uh, broken out of their eggs and started growing and eating on the, the flats. So we find them around the, the summertime most often here in Florida, but it may be different if you're living up farther along the Atlantic coast. Um, so one other fun little fact that separates horseshoe crabs from other types of, that again separates horseshoe crabs from crabs besides the literal millions of years separation, um, is the fact that horseshoe crabs crawl forward out of their shells when they're molting and true crustaceans they actually back out of their shells when they're molting. So you would look at a crustacean's shell at the back area to check to see if this was a dead crab or a molt. Um, and well that's all I have to say about horseshoe crabs. Um, I have a little QR code here if you'd like to learn more um, or follow the link.
Um, but I'd also love to answer any questions we might have. Um, can they be different colors? Yes, they can. Yeah. Um, so they can they range from like an or an olivey brown to like a sandy color. Um, I think there's a little delay. Sorry. Oh, it's OK. As long as the audio is the same, it doesn't really matter, right? I think it's we're, we should be OK, hopefully. Yeah. Um, somebody wanted to know, do horseshoe crabs live a long time? Yes, horseshoe crabs live 15 to 20 years. I think the wow. oldest recorded crab was 27 years old. Um, they live a very, very long time, especially for something like so an arthropod. Arthropods don't tend to live such a long life. All right, we have another one. Do horseshoe crabs sting or bite? No, they don't. They actually have no venom, no nothing, but just being very sharp. There's not, and they won't actually try to hurt you either. Um, they just want to get away when they are picked up and things like that. So yeah, they don't sting or bite, they're harmless. All right. Um, one of them asked how, uh, Charlotte asked, how do you, how do they flip up themselves over? So they'll get their tail and um, poke it into the sand and sort of use it as a way to flip, prop themselves up. So they sort of wiggle it around enough that it will flop themselves over. Um, it's, yeah. it's uh, kind of funny to watch, um, <laughs> but they do usually manage it themselves even without our help. So this question is about locations. Now, where where do they live in America? I mean, I know we have them here on the Gulf Coast. Are they all over Florida? Are they all over America? They are everywhere on the Atlantic coast from Maine all the way down, all the way around the Florida coast and actually in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. They're not found um, beyond, roughly beyond Alabama. Uh, along the Gulf Coast until you hit the Yucatan Peninsula again. So you can find them almost anywhere on the Atlantic Coast, or you can find them anywhere on the Atlantic Coast and in some parts of the Gulf um, mm -hmm. and Caribbean. So this question is, do they breathe in and out of water? They are very good at surviving out of water for extended periods of time. Uh, they use like secondary mode of, of breathing. So as long as they have wet gills, so those gills I showed you on the very bottom side, yeah. they can stay out of water for hours without um, wow. suffocating. Yeah. Right. I have a question from Mrs. Hibbard's class who wanted to know how hard is the shell? It's very hard. Um, we actually tag horseshoe crabs and have to poke a little hole in the shell to put their tags on. And um, it's it's pretty thick and and very strong. So like pro stronger than a crustacean shell, I would even say um, from experience. Somebody here might know a little bit about horseshoe crabs. They wanted to know why do horseshoe crab crabs have blue blood? Oh, great question. Yes, uh, they have blue blood blood because their blood is um, copper based. So our blood is iron based, so it's red in color. Theirs is copper based, so it's blue in color. Um, and so when they do bleed, it's like a, a, a milky bluish color. It's very interesting to see. It is. All right, a couple more since we have some time. Um, when somebody asked if we work with NOAA, but I know we work with a lot of partners, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we do work with NOAA. Um, we use a lot of their uh, data. Um, I think some of our grant funding comes from NOAA. So we worked with them many, many times before, uh, and they they do care quite a bit about um, horseshoe crabs and, and wildlife. Sure. All right. Somebody asked a question. How long do they say super small? So, you know, when they're first born to like, how long does it take them to get maybe to those larger shells? So it takes them nine to ten years to reach full size. The first year they molt like three or four times. So they'll stay pretty small for like two or three years and then they'll start to get bigger and bigger. Um, so they, they molt a lot when they're younger and then it kind of slowly tapers off until they finally hit that final molt. All right, how about um, do they walk on the ocean floor or can they swim? 
they can both walk and swim. Primarily, they like to walk on the ocean floor and that's how their body shape is, is best suited. But when they do need to swim, they actually swim upside down. Um, I don't have a clip for you, but it's very cool if you YouTube uh, search horseshoe crab swimming, they swim and flap their gill to give them and their operculum to give them a little bit of movement and they actually swim upside down. It's, it's kind of funny <laughs> to watch. Um, somebody said, what water can you put hor on horseshoe crabs? So maybe what they're meaning is, do horseshoe crabs live in salt water or fresh water? Horseshoe crabs live in salt water and they can tolerate fresher water. They'll come up into brackish water, but you'll never find them in purely fresh environments. Here's a great question. Do they lay eggs or give live birth? That is another good question. Yeah. Um, they lay eggs. Um, they, they lay eggs very similar to how frogs lay eggs, actually. They'll, the female will lay a nest and lay her or dig a dig a, a hole in the ground like a nest so like a turtle and a frog combined um and she'll lay her eggs and then a male horseshoe crab will release his sperm and so it will fertilize those eggs externally which is another very uncommon trait for arthropods almost all um insects um and and crustaceans are, are fertilized internally so Horseshoe crabs are kind of opposite in that way and more like amphibians in the way that the male will be around a female and then sure. release his. So yeah, it's, so yeah. they do lay eggs. Yep, not like no. Are they a protected species or are they illegal to have as a pet? You can own them as a pet. Um, you, you can actually buy them online. Uh, they are, you're not allowed to take them out of the water. Um, so you'd have to buy them from the aquarium like business because those people have to get specific permits to be able to collect horseshoe crabs, at least in the state of Florida. The rules change depending on what state you live in, but here you're not allowed to take them home. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow us down to two more questions. Uh, somebody asked, are, are, how, what do they weigh? I mean, they look like they're heavy. Are they heavy? Yeah, um, they can weigh over a pound. Um, I usually measure in um, kilograms. So if you know the metric system or if you can do, I can't do the quick conversion still, um, but they usually, the females will weigh um, over 2,000 kilograms sometimes, or uh, 2,000 grams. So they can get pretty heavy um, and hefty. The females actually get larger than the males and they, they can, um, they can, when you're carrying them, it's kind of like a, it hurts your arm to hold them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so our last question will be, do horseshoe crabs stay with their parents or once they're born, they're on their own? Once they're born, they're on their own. They, yeah. um, their parents go out. Their parents tend to be a little farther out of in the, the water um, and the babies will stay closer inshore as they grow, they'll move farther and farther out. Um, but the Parents, once they lay those eggs, they're, they're out of there. I just want to yeah. thank you, Berlina. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.